A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord, glory be to you. Let us be attentive. At that time the Lord told this parable. A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that is coming to me. So the father divided up the property. Some days later this younger son collected all his belongings and went off to a distant land where he squandered his money on dissolute living after he had spent everything. A great famine broke out in that country and he was in dear need. So he attached himself to one of the property class of the place who sent him to his farm to take care of the pigs. He longed to fill his belly with the hogs that were fodder for the pigs, but no one made a move to give him anything. Coming to his senses at last, he said, How many hired hands at my father's place have more than enough to eat while here I am starving? I will break away and return to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I no longer desire to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. With that he set off for his father's house. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was deeply moved. He ran out to meet him, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. The father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the finished drop and put it on, on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Take the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. Then the celebration began. Meanwhile, the elder son was out on the land. As he near, neared the house on his way home, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked him the reason for the dancing and the music. The servant answered, Your brother is home and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has him back in good health. The son grew angry at this and would not go in, but his father came out and began to plead with him. He said to his father in reply, For years now I have slayed for you. I never disobeyed one of your orders, yet you never gave me so much as a kid goat to celebrate with my friends. Then, when this son of yours returns after having gone through your property with loose women, you kill the fatted calf to him. My son, replied the father, you are with me always, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice. This brother of yours was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. Glory be to you, O Lord, glory be to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is born. Beloved in Christ, today we have the Sunday of the Prodigal Son. Now just two weeks from the beginning of Great Land, we are reminded today of who we are. Beloved children of God who need to come to our senses and return to our loving, forgiven Father. No matter what we have done, no matter how we have diminished ourselves, no matter how broken we have made our relationship with God, he patiently awaits our return, runs to greet us, 
and welcomes us back into his family with joy and celebration. We can be sure that the prodigal son in today's Gospel didn't think that his father would react that way to him. After all, he had asked his father for his inheritance, which was like telling the old man that he should drop dead so the son could have his money. The son traveled far away, quickly wasted his money with parting and immortality, ended up as a servant taking care of pigs, and was so hungry that he wished he could eat the pig's slop. Then the young man came to himself, realized how miserable his life was, and decided to return home in hopes of becoming a servant to his father. He realized that he had sinned against his father, that he wasn't worthy to be called his son anymore, and wanted only to be a hired hand. No self-respecting father in that time and place could be expected to do more for such a rebellious and disrespectful son. The young man would have been fortunate to have been taken back into the household even as the lowest servant. But the father won't hear of it. In a way that must have shocked everyone, he runs to greet his son, embraces and kisses him, gives him fine clothes, slaughters and calf, and throws a big party. The father did not judge, condemn or reject his son. Instead, he rejoices that a beloved child who was lost has returned home, that one who was dead to him has been restored to life. This story of the prodigal son should shape all the repentance that we do in our lives, whether in land or not. For it reminds us who God is and who we are. As in this parable, there are no limits to our Lord's mercy, no restraints on His compassion or forgiveness. Our Lord, God and Savior Jesus Christ was born, baptized, taught, worked miracles, was crucified and resurrected, and ascended into heaven for our salvation. He came as a second Adam to restore us as the children of God, to put us in our proper place in the family of heaven as those created in the divine image and likeness. Despite what some of us may be tempted to believe, the Father is not a harsh, stern, hateful judge who is out to get us. Likewise, the Son did not come to condemn and punish, but to save. We should have no fears about Him rejecting our repentance, no matter what we have done. He accepted and blessed everyone who came to Him in humble repentance during His earthly ministry, including tax collectors, a woman caught in adultery, Gentiles, the demon-possessed, and His own apostles who denied and abandoned Him. Christ even prayed for the forgiveness of those who crucified Him. His abundant mercy and compassion extend to us and to all who call upon Him from the depth of our hearts. This story also holds a mirror up to us. It reminds us that, like the prodigal son, we have foolishly rejected our true identity as the beloved children of God. 
We have chosen our own pride, our own self-centered desires, our habits and preferences, our over a healthy relationship with our Heavenly Father. And we have borne the consequences of our decisions and actions by making ourselves and others miserable. Lent is the time set aside in the church calendar to come to our senses, to recognize the truth of what we have done to ourselves, and begin the journey back to the Lord. But we have a major advantage over the prodigal son. We know that our Heavenly Father wants nothing more than to restore us to His family. He wants nothing more than to forgive, heal and bless us, to return us to our proper dignity as sons and daughters of the Most High. You see, Lent is not about getting God to change His mind about us. Instead, it is about us changing our minds and lives in order to return to God. No amount of prayer, fasting and almsgiving will alter anything about the Lord, but these tools are useful in helping us see the truth about our sinfulness and in opening our lives to the mercy which Jesus Christ always extends to repent sinners. But we have to be careful here. Some of us hear words like sinfulness and repentance and immediately think of God as harsh, unforgiving and out to punish us. We may be terrified of God and think that He wants us to be miserable. So we obsess about our failings, judge ourselves as hopeless cases when we aren't perfect, and end up taking the joy out of life. The good news is that God did not create us for a joyless life of despair but to share in the blessedness of his life. The eternal Son of God became one of us to heal our broken humanity and bring us into the joy of the kingdom. We pray, fast, give alms and forgive our enemies as ways of embracing his healing, of accepting his gracious transformation of our lives. Like the man in the pigsty, we also need to come to our senses, see the truth about God and ourselves, and act accordingly. It is only our own stubborn refusal which holds us back from entering into the joy of the Lord. Let's use this coming gland to get over that stubbornness, swallow our pride, and return home to a Father who loves us more than we can even imagine. He has sent His only begotten Son to restore us to the dignity of His beloved sons and daughters. Amen.